Once a psychologist, who I read from time to time, said that they change their surrounding every couple of years in order to feel mobile, agile, and ready for transformations, as this is what life and personal growth is about. And by surrounding, they meant people mostly. On the one hand, I agree with the part about the transformation journey, but on the other, I just don't agree <laughs> that we should treat people as disposables. While, as philosopher Jean Baudrillard said in his book The Consumer Society, we are living in a different reality than our ancestors. We are less surrounded by other people and more by things that we fill up with meanings, hopes, and expectations. These two stances made me think, and in today's video I want to discuss with you how we can actually build our own surrounding, or better say, microcosm, in order to thrive and why it is important. It's not just about people or things, but also attitudes and micro-choices that we make every day. Why micro? Uh, because for many people, including me, it's the small things and incidents that have a huge power to either disrupt disrupt or smoothen out the everyday flow of life. There are four main blocks to construct a personal microcosm. It's people, things, information, and attitudes. I will save the most powerful block to discuss closer to the end of the video, and we'll begin with people. However secluded we can be, human interactions are almost impossible to avoid. For example, we have family who we cannot choose, but the majority of people in our human surrounding are those who we can actually choose. It's partners, friends, acquaintances, and even YouTubers who you watch. Just think and analyze who makes you feel inspired, relaxed, or motivated motivated, loving, and loved, and who just doesn't contribute to any of those feelings. I strongly believe that each and every person deserves respect, respect of otherness in them, but on the other hand, this doesn't oblige you to connect and interact with someone who doesn't leave anything but an aftertaste of uselessly and annoyingly spent time. Life, after all, is too short for that. Right now, I have a very narrow circle of regular, deep and personal communication, less than 10 people, with only two of them I can connect offline, and it's my partner Brian, and also my friend who also lives here. With years, I've realized how difficult it is to build new relationships and friendships, maybe because my expectations are too high, I don't know. I talked about friendships in more detail in one of my videos on Patreon, where I shared more personal stories and insights. And one of those insights was that just some people are not meant to be in your life forever and it's fine. I have experienced friendships that lasted only for one day and they were still worth it. I understand quite well that it's hard to be picky with people and say no to certain connections in order to protect your boundaries, to be yourself, to follow who you are deep inside, but we just have to learn to say no to people, to form our human surroundings, because it's very important. When I was young, my parents would often cite Omar Khayyam's poems and quotes, and one of them, most popular, I think, was the following. To wisely live your life, you don't need to know much. Just remember two main rules for the beginning. You better starve than eat whatever, and better be alone than with whoever. living in the world where we can choose things to surround ourselves with, clothes, 
electronics, dishware, personal items, and so on and so forth. But because of the abundance of affordable choices, it's often very challenging to stay a responsible consumer. And that's why videos on decluttering are so popular here on YouTube. I'm trying to live a minimalist lifestyle, but I often just don't vibe with minimalist aesthetics because I love diversity. I love vibrance and colors, but two things are even more important than that. It's comfort and inner balance. Wear clothes that are pleasant to your skin, colors that shape your mood well, either soothe or pick you up, whatever you need at the moment. Don't limit yourself in what makes you feel good to be living right here and right now. Things don't have to be perfect. They just need to be lovable. I enjoy mending my favorite clothes, and back in my Siberian hometown, I used to eat from a bowl with a chipped brim, because there were some very important memories and insights encapsulated in there. I bought the bowl in a tiny ceramic store in the Altai Mountains, and the chipping situation happened when my late father dropped a spoon on it. And I still continued using the bowl over and over again after the Altai journey was over, after my father passed, because I just wanted to remember to accept and to forgive. But on the other hand, another personal example is that I had to declutter one of my most loved dresses of all times just because I couldn't wear it without being sad, being reminded of the memories attached to that dress. Material possessions that we use daily, our favorite mug, a pen, a journal, comfy pants or an old tea, they all bring more stability and familiarity and can provide a sense of continuity even when other aspects of our life are changing. The symbolic self-completion theory suggests that people use material possessions as symbols in order to create or enhance their identity. Thus, just choose which aspects of you and your life you would love to keep and which you would like to change through things that surround you right now. Information. So many spears have been and are still being broken over this. What information to consume and how? Do you need to delete social media or just limit your subscriptions? Or maybe you should throw your phone and laptop away and go live in the woods. I don't think that this type of extreme is good in the long run. Yes, our lives are now over flooded with information and all types of content, but instead of cutting yourself out of this avalanche, you can choose a different way that can be more challenging, but also more explorative, also self-explorative and exciting. You can create and maintain your own broadcasting channel, which motto is My mind is not a garbage bin. And once you get armed with this motto, it can become much easier to cut or add any content to your daily intake. We are all so different, and there is no cookie-cutter solution for everyone. It's your microcosm and no one else's. For example, in my information surrounding, there is no place for short-form videos, because I don't enjoy them at all, and they make me feel anxious. But I do read and watch news. There was time back in spring 2022 when I had to limit my news intake for a while in order to gain some mental stability back, but 
Now I'm being much better with uh, managing my news intake. My personal reality requires knowing news and analyzing them for many reasons, but it's me. You can read or watch news if your life or life of your loved ones literally depends on knowing the news, or you can teach this uh, sort of information blog if it's not your situation. With years, I found out that rather than ditching use, it's better and more beneficial for my personal growth to limit the intake of repetitive videos on YouTube, the ones that feel lifeless and empty. Because at least news make me think, make me assess and reassess the reality. Another aspect of information hygiene that can be quite controversial is whether to consume positive content only. I personally think that it's not the way out, because our life and the world are more complex than that. And peace, meaningfulness and inspiration can be found in darker content too. It just takes a bit more mental and emotional juices, so to say, to process it. There needs to be a balance between depth and shallowness, simplicity and complexity, joy and sadness, in order to develop more understanding, empathy and intelligence, emotional intelligence as well. So be more critical about what you consume information-wise, clean your subscriptions, analyze, experiment and explore, and never forget that your mind is not a garbage bin. Attitudes. It's the most powerful block or even the whole foundation of your personal microcosm. Yet it, it's so hard to shape it intentionally, especially if your life circumstances, your habitat, so to say, are very far from what you really desire. I've encountered advice like, if you don't like where you are in your life at the moment, just change it. But, unfortunately, it's not always possible. I don't support the idea, the philosophy, that everything that we have in our life is just our responsibility that we attracted it this way or another. It's a very toxic mindset that roots in very extensive privilege. The thing is that nobody knows all the real causes of challenging things events, whatever happening to people. And not everything in our life is our own responsibility, because otherwise we would be divine entities or demiurgs. But we are not, unfortunately or fortunately. So the only way to deal with what you have to deal with is choosing the attitude that supports you every morning when you open your eyes to the new day. It's important to remember that sometimes compromises have to be made. If you constantly search for a perfect variant, there are high chances that you will never find it. There is no such a thing as perfect life or perfect circumstances. Make peace with what you have at the moment, accept what you cannot change, and try to make something good out of it. So you must not be frightened if a sadness rises up before you larger than any you have ever seen. If a restiveness like light and cloud shadows passes over your hands and over all you do, you must think that something is happening with you, that life has not forgotten you, that it holds you in its hand, it will not let you fall. Why do you want to shut out of your life any uneasiness, any miseries or any depression? For after all, you do not know what work these conditions are doing inside you. 
I hope that at least some things that I've said today resonated with you and inspired you to be more intentional with building your own microcosm. Feel free to share your thoughts and experiences in the comments. Thank you so much for your time and attention, dear friends. And as always, huge thanks to everyone who supports my work on Patreon and other tipping platforms, because it's only thanks to you that this channel exists. And for now, be safe and keep your heart open, and I will see you soon. Пока-пока!